Hello, my name is Jennifer Bland, and today I want to share with you ways that you can actually ace your whiteboarding um, test that you're going to have as part of your interview for any type of software development role. Whiteboarding is just a mechanism that potential employers will use to determine if you have the necessary coding skills that they want for a particular open position. And by using the whiteboarding exam test, they actually will see how you write code, how well you understand things as you write code, and then also your thought process as you go through and actually write the code. So I am going to work my way through um, some whiteboarding examples for you to follow along and you can actually see how these work so that you can practice and be ready for your next interview and so you will be able to ace your whiteboarding test that you'll be given. So the test that I'm going to work on today is a common question that you might get and that question is I want you on this whiteboard here is I want you to write a function that will take a string as an input and it will return whether or not that string is a palindrome and if you're not familiar with what a palindrome is a palindrome is a word that's written the same way both forward as it is backwards radar pop because when you think R-A-D-A-R, R-A-D-A-R, it's written the same way, both forwards and backwards. The word hello, on the other hand, is not a palindrome. So what you want to do is write a function that determines if a string is a palindrome. Once you've been given the exercise by the potential employer, always ask questions. Um, that allows you to show that you're... Um, questioning what is that you want to accomplish, how you're going to be able to accomplish it, um, and it provides feedback to the potential employers. So if I was given that question, one of the first questions I would ask would be, what type of return do you want to come out of this function? If it's a palindrome, do you want me just to give you the string back or, or give you an empty string if it's not a palindrome, or do you want me to, to return a Boolean? That would be true or false based on whether or not the word that I've been given is a palindrome. So that would be one of the first questions that I would ask. And most likely the answer they would be given is that they want the function to return true or false as to whether or not the string is a palindrome. So now that I've got some basic information, I can start working on my function. So what I do is I'll come over here and I'm just going to say I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call my function palindrome. And it's going to take in one parameter, which is a string. So now what I have is the beginning of what I'm going to show the potential employer in terms of my um, coding skills for solving this, this function. Now there are multiple ways that you can go about solving this function. And one of the most common ways that I've seen people try to solve it is they will take a for loop and they will loop through each character in the string and they will compare the, that first character to the last character in the string. And if they're the same, they continue on. Then they compare the next character from the front and from the back. And they will see, are they the same? And then they will keep doing it until they meet at the middle. And if they meet at that point and every character matches, then you know that you have a palindrome. Um, that's one way of doing it, um, but I think one of the things that, that they're really wanting to accomplish in that asking you that interview question is how well do you know the native data types in JavaScript? Well, a string is a data type, one of the native data types that are in JavaScript. Um, another data type that you have is an object. Um, a string, the native data type on string does not have a method to do a reverse of the string. But the, an array, which is um, a type of an object in JavaScript, does have a built-in method called reverse that you can use to reverse things. Well, you're thinking, well, I'm asked to reverse a string, not an array. But one of the things that you can do is show that you have knowledge of all the primitive data types within JavaScript and also how you can move between them to be able to accomplish what you want in this function. So if you want to use that built-in reverse and not have to rewrite everything by doing a for loop, 
Um, I can use what's given to me natively within JavaScript on an array and use that reverse function. So now I need to figure out how I can get my string and convert it into an array. Well, the string method natively has a method on it that's called split. And split will actually convert a string into an array. So this is the first step that I'm going to do um, in my function. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a new variable. I'm just going to call it string2. And I'm going to set it equal to string dot split and the split method actually requires you to um, put in a um, parameter into the method that tells it on what it is going to be splitting the actual string itself. So I'm using quote quote which basically means after every single letter in the um, string it's going to split it out into an individual element into the array. Um, now that I have it out into an array, what I can do is basically now I can reverse it. So I can do string two dot reverse. So now I have my string is now reversed. So it is reversed. So now I've got to figure out what do I need to do to convert it from an array back into an string? And this, um, there is a method that's called join that will actually convert it back into a string. So um, So I'm going to use the split method. I'm going to use the same quote quote that basically says I'm just going to convert it all into a single string with nothing um, to separate them out. And I now have my string as a reverse. So string two now is an exact reverse of string. So what I want to do is then compare these and return them. So one of the things that I can do is I can just check to see if string is equal to string2. And if it is, I can return true. Else, I'm going to return false. And there I have my function that I have written that will actually go out and compare to see if something is a, um, a true palindrome or not. Now, there are some things that I can do to actually make this a little bit better. One of the things I can do is I can take my if statement and take all of this code that's down here and I can refactor that. And I can refactor it to where it just returns whether or not string is equal to string 2. So this one line is equivalent to what I had in my if statement before. So I make things a little bit easier because um, this is going to be either a true or false. And that's what I'm going to be returning out of my function. Now. There's also this thing that I can do because in JavaScript, you can actually chain methods together. So I can actually take all these three lines and convert them into a single line. So I'm going to change this. So I have my var and I'm going to have var string2 is equal to string dot split. Dot, now it's an array, so now I'm going to reverse. And now I'm going to join it back together. So now I have string two in one line where I've converted to an array. I've built, used the built-in reverse function that's built into an array to reverse it. And then I've converted back to a string. 
So now string two is an exact reverse, and I now can compare it between the two of them um, to see what's going on. So what I can do is, as I'm going through and I'm actually working on my function, I can actually write it and then completely refactor it. And it, while I'm refactoring it, actually explain it to the potential employer so they can follow my thought process. So I can tell them why I put this into one line because it's easier because I know everything that I want to do on that string is on one line. It's easy to follow. It's easy to understand. I do a single line of return on it to compare it. Now, another question I might need to ask the potential employer because technically my function as it is written will work. There's some problems that this might have on here that you need to ask as part of your interview in your whiteboarding exam. And one of the questions that you might need to ask would be, um, well, do I need to worry about upper and lower case? You know, because radar with a capital R is the first letter and then A-D-A-R technically isn't a palindrome if you worry about case because a capital R and a lowercase r are not equivalent. So in that case, this would not, would fail. This would not return as a palindrome because of that case differential that you have in there. So you have to ask about that. Well, what about these outliers? What about these exceptions that I need to worry about? And they're like, oh, well, I don't worry about about case. So uppercase R, lowercase a, d, a, r would return true as a palindrome, just would the lowercase r, a, d, a, r would return true. Well, if that is the case, then I need to convert my original string to lowercase or to uppercase, it doesn't matter, so that it's consistent. So what I can do in here And I'm just going to convert it to lowercase. Um, and so in here, I've converted it to lowercase. So now that outlier of, well, what about case? Does that matter? Um, so that would be a question that you might need to ask on there. Um, another thing would be, well, what do I do if what I'm passed in is an empty string? Do I need to return true or false for an empty string? So you need to ask for that. So if you've asked that question, so you would need to put in a line up here in the very beginning that would check the test to see if your string is a string or not. Um, and that would be another test that you would have, would be what if somebody put into um, the, uh, passed into the function, the number one, two, three. Well, that's not a string. So you're not comparing that. So might you, that would be another thing that you would, um, basically ask the potential employer, well, what do I need to do if this string isn't a string? Um, so somebody passed me in a number or a Boolean or a function or something else. Um, how do I account for that? Um, so that you need to be able to ask these questions because just writing a simple two-line function, yes, it does work. Will it work 100% of the time? No is what the employer paying you to do is to write code that will work 100% of the time. Yes. Are you meeting that criteria by just putting in two lines? And the answer is really no. So what I've done is I've put in the thing where I convert it to lowercase to handle um, whether or not upper and lowercase counts. Um, another thing would be what if um, there's pronu um, pronunciation that's in there like a space do we account for space or do we need to remove um, a space that's in there? Um, so that would be another question that you have in there. If if they tell you to remove all punctuation like a space, a comma, a period, an exclamation mark, a question mark before running your test, you can do that up here just like you converted it to lower string. You can remove all pron um, um, pronunciation by using a regex expression that takes all pronunciation marks and removes them from the string. Um, and then you can then um, reverse it and compare it. So that would be something else that you would need to ask the potential employer, um, you know, before you actually, you know, finish up your, your test that, that you have on there. 
Um, so that just gives you some examples of things that are going on on here because basically in asking this very simple question, write a function that determines if a string is a palindrome, what the employer, like I said earlier, is basically wanting to see is how well do you know JavaScript? How well do you know the, the native data types that are in JavaScript and the methods that are provided with them? We know that there is a reverse that's on an array. It's not there on a string. So is there a way that I can use that even though I'm originally starting with a string? And yes, you can by knowing that you can split a string into an array, convert it back to a string, and then you can compare them um, that's in there. And as you're going through and you're writing it, make sure that you communicate your work as you're going along um, so that they can understand that. And I think it's important to ask questions, especially about the outliers, about does, does case count? What if they don't pass me in a string? What do I do in that case? What if the parameter they pass into me isn't a string? What if it's some other data type, like a number? How do you want me to handle something along that line? Um, you know, uh, do I need to remove pronunciation marks? So ask, start asking questions like that because these are real things that you're going to get um, in a day-to-day -day environment as a programmer. And what you're showing to that potential employer is that when you are faced with those on your day job, you're able to handle them successfully. And that's what they want in a potential uh, employee. So I hope this is valuable. Um, I have several other videos that talk about whiteboarding exercises, so feel free to check them all out. My website is jenniferbland.com. Thank you very much for watching.